for 3D modeling of historical buildings or places that may not exist anymore, we often have to rely on images. Images such as uh, architectural drawings or archaeological site plans. In this video, I'm going to explain to you two different ways of importing these images in Blender and discuss the pros and cons of both methods. The first method that I'm going to demonstrate is import images as empties. Empty objects in Blender are uh, objects that are not rendered in the final render. But these objects do exist in your Blender scene and they can be used for instance as a reference during modeling. In this case we're going to use images uh, that are contained in empty objects as references for our modeling. This is probably the easiest and most user-friendly way of getting images in Blender because it's simply a matter of drag and drop. So when you have a explorer window open next to your Blender window, you can simply select an image and drag and drop it in the Blender scene. As you can see, it is imported perpendicular to my current viewing, uh, viewing angle and that means that the image imported also rotated. Um, you can simply reset its rotation by select selecting the rotation fields over here and enter zero. Uh, we can also reset the location, enter zero, now it's exactly in the center. And this is more practical of course when you start modeling on top of the uh, on top of the image. There's also an easier way to circumvent this uh, this issue, and that is simply by hitting seven on your uh, on your numpad uh, to go into top orthographic view or whatever orthographic view, either uh, one of the orthographic views, and then do the same thing: drag and drop the image, and it imports directly aligned with uh, with. Uh, with the Blender access system. So uh, you can see right away that whenever you hover over the edge of the image, a yellow line will appear with uh, yellow, uh, yellow squares in the corner. You can drag and uh, drag these squares to resize the image. Also in the middle there's this cross and you can use this to, um, yeah, to, uh, to move the image around. Um, in a uh, in the next video, I will discuss how to accurately scale images um, using scale bars that are present on the image because this way of scaling it is just uh, a very rough uh, way and not very uh, precise. So with the image imported and selected, there are some properties that you can set in the properties panel on the right. You have to go here, uh, over here and select the uh, uh, one before last icon, the object uh, data properties. Uh, in this case, it's in the icon of an image. And here you can have a whole range of settings. And I will demonstrate the use of these settings with a different Blender scene over here. So I've used the same image uh, a couple of time, uh, a couple of times, and put them in such a way that, uh, like they are aligned, the front part of the house is aligned with the cross section of the house and the back side, the back facade of the of this uh, this house. Um, so, for instance, you can select one of the images and select whether it should be displayed uh, in front like this it is now displayed in front of all the other images or uh, behind all the other images and you can also decide whether only the front or the only the back side so in this case only the back side front side is not visible or both sides are visible and whether they should be visible in orthographic view so for instance i don't want to deal with this uh, with this image when I am uh, viewing at my model in perspective I can turn it off but if I go in front orthographic view it is uh, again visible now it's not visible I can do this with this one as well to make it clear so now I'm in front orthographic view and it is visible and not in perspective view 
Um, what else can you do? Um, you can, uh, for instance, make uh, an image opaque. So let's get this image back. So when I want to make opaque, when I want to make them a little bit see-through, so I can turn on opacity and then drag this slider. Uh, this can be especially useful when you are modeling, you have already an object in your scene. So I prepared an object like this. So I have this object here, a simple model of this, uh, of this house. So now I can, uh, for instance, turn on opacity and I can see through this image. So the second uh, method to import images in Blender is through a add-on called Import Images as Planes. And for me, this is the preferred method of uh, importing and using images in Blender. And I will discuss, after I showed you how to import this, uh, I will discuss why the, uh, for me this is the preferred method. So in order to be able to import images as planes, uh, you have to turn on this add-on in Blender. So go to add-ons in preferences and use this search bar to find import export import images as plain it is by default turned off you have to turn it on make sure to save the preferences and now you have a separate import uh, option if we go to file import and uh, as the last one images as planes now we can go to the images and we were working with this image um, you can already preset all, all kinds of things like the size in which it will be imported um, if you know the absolute scale of the image uh, generally you don't um, uh, you can also already set its orientation or its uh, location um, generally i turn off the offset and offset it is an offset to the x y or z axis so actually it's location um, one meter well we can already we already know that the image is representing a picture that is, uh, or a building that is way larger than a meter um, in fact it should we put it in something like 50 meters and maybe that's still too small um, and then align to the main axis that is fine so we have it now imported in Blender, but as you can see, we don't see the image. And that is because the image is a texture that is projected on a plane. A plane is a, a real mesh object in Blender that is also rendered in the final render. But when we are in solid modeling, uh, modeling yeah, solid modeling uh, viewport modus, mode, um, by default you don't see any textures if we turn on a uh, material preview uh, mode then it will after a while start to display uh, uh, display the texture so just to show to you how this works um, i'm going to the shader editor and with this with this object selected shows to me that it has this image and it drives into the base color of this shader and that creates this material with this image um, however there are some downsides of this of displaying uh, the image as a texture on a plane that is only visible in material preview, preview mode and as, this is especially obvious when you when you turn on uh, rendered preview mode so when I have a point light like this I turn up the what it you can see that it is influenced by the light that is present in the scene um, and this is opposed to uh, opposed to the empty object the empty image this is not affected by the light this that just displays the image as it is as it appears in your image viewer on your uh, computer so that is a bit of a downside but there are, there's a trick 
uh, around this. Um, so back to material or uh, solid, uh, solid viewing mode. I go here and I simply turn on texture. So I can choose in solid, uh, in solid mode to display nonetheless the textures on the objects that I have. So now we do have a very clear image um, that can be used as a good reference for the 3D model. So what are the pros of using this method to import image data rather than import them as a uh, empty object and why do I prefer this method of importing images in Blender? So one uh, big difference between images uh, that are imported as a empty object is that these images that are imported as planes are actual 3D mesh objects. That means they are rendered, rendered in the final scene and that can be an advantage whenever you want to uh, create a render that displays the source information, the source images uh, next to the actual model that you created based on it. And also these images can be exported and can be published uh, together with the model that you created and that has the big advantage that others can check your model can validate whether your model is close to your source data or whether you made any mistakes and this kind of things um, but there is an additional advantage um, of having images as mesh object as planes in Blender scene and that is that they are also editable in a way that is impossible with um, images that are imported as empty objects. So what do I mean with that? Uh, that is uh, the following. Um, so we are until now we've been looking at the image in object mode but we can also select edit mode going into edit mode you can see this image has vertices that I can select and using G move around uh, now I'm going into edge select mode uh, which allows me to select one of the edges of the plane one of the four edges and I can also hit G and move them around now you see that it will do something that I do not want and that it uh, starts to squeeze the image as I move the edges um, but what I want is to make cutouts of each of these individual drawings so I can individually position or align them with each other in actual 3d space which gives me a much more accurate uh, basis for my reconstruction so how do I do this so I have this lower edge selected with edge mode uh, edge select mode activated and rather than hitting G once I hit G twice G once it starts moving G a second time and it starts sliding so this is vertex or edge sliding and this is exactly what I want so I select this image and now um, I did forget because I have to make a duplicate of this image I do shift D move it on the X axis so this is uh, something that I will use later when I'm going to cut out the other parts uh, momentarily I'm gonna focus on this lower row of uh, plan drawings of different floors of the house so I go back with tab into edit mode select the upper edge hit G once hit G twice and it starts sliding I'm going out of edit mode and I'm gonna by hitting shift D and then Y I'm gonna create duplicates of this uh, of this row of 
uh, plan drawings and I create four duplicates because these are four so what I want to do is going into edit mode again with tap hit G once hit G twice select this one going out of edit mode with tap then hit G one twice etc so I would do this for every part of this drawing and the next step of course is to position them accurately in 3d space and that is something that we're going to discuss in the following video this is just to demonstrate why I prefer to use the um, use the import images as planes of course what you could also do is to prepare this image already uh, in Photoshop or GIMP whatever editing program to make all these cutouts independently save them and then import them individually um, so as uh, as empty objects um, that is of course a possibility only this is possibly more work or similar amount of work um, however the big downside of this is that uh, it will become more difficult to scale the image accurately because when you uh, uh, when you have scaled this image only once and after that start to modify it and make it out it will all you don't have to modify the scale anymore because you have to do it only once for the first image that you imported so the final result of this process will look like something like this uh, and how I created this will be the subject of the next video so in this video we discuss the two main uh, methods of importing images as reference uh, material in blender the first one was the uh, import images as empties and the second one was the import images as plain using the add-on okay thank you for listening and see you in the next video